All right, so I just want to explain a PTC quickly. A PTC is the opposite of an NTC. And an NTC, negative temperature coefficient, those are those devices we use for inrush current. They start off a higher resistance. As current flows and they heat up, then they have a negative resistance. The resistance goes down, so then they allow current to flow. So we use those for inrush current. For fuses, we use the opposite. Uh, they start off low, and then as current goes up, they the resistance goes up. So positive temperature coefficient, positive. The resistance goes up a temperature versus the other one, negative temperature coefficient. Okay, so Raychem, I think it was, came up with the patent on those years ago. I'm, I'm sure it's 20 years ago or more. And then it ran out. And it's probably more like 30 years even. Gosh, I'm getting old. Uh, anyway, the patent ran out. And for at least the ten, last 10 years uh, or so, even longer than that, uh, I, probably around, I'm guessing 13 years ago, maybe the patent ran out, something like that, because everybody else started making them. And so what you see is they almost have a rough appearance, some of them, the less expensive ones. The Raychems were kind of the shiny ones, so uh, it was a epoxy coating, and from what I remember, they're yellow and shiny, and they're kind of rectangular. They still make them. Uh, and we're, we're gonna see some in, in future videos and so on, but the uh, uh, a lot of the ones we see now are circular. They look a lot like MOVs, but once you get used to looking at them, you can tell the difference, okay? I know they get confused a lot with MOVs, and MOVs get confused with PTCs, because a lot of the MOVs they use in these multimeters are actually very small. Your surge devices, like say in a, in a surge strip, they're much larger, okay, much larger. Uh, the ones in, in the meters, they're, there's already some defense mechanisms built into the meter, but they're geared to just keep the voltage clamped down for somewhat low energy spikes. Even though I showed the current was several thousand amps, that's still relatively small compared to, uh, like, say, like I said, your surge strip, those things will be rated for tens of thousands of amps, okay? Uh, so anyway, getting back to your meter, um, you know, the PTC is, you can tell the difference because you can take your own meter and measure between the legs and you can see some resistance there and there you know it's a PTC. If you read those leads and it's high, then it's an MOV, okay? MOVs are also variable resistors, metal oxide varistor. So metal MOVs, as voltage goes up, so they're varistors, voltage controlled resistors instead of temperature controlled. So as voltage goes up, resistance goes down. And resistance goes down to only a certain point. That's why they're called clamping devices. And, they, and they'll clamp the voltage at a certain level. Now, it is true that it depends on how much current's flowing through them. If a lot of current's flowing through them, there's some bulk resistance, so the voltage actually uh, will increase with how much current is going through them. Uh, so, okay. So, just wanted to clarify the whole PTC thing. And when you look at reviews and when you look at your own meters, hopefully you can tell the difference. And if not, use your own meter and you can tell. It's hard to tell if they're shiny or rough. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can't. MOVs often have the epoxy coating, so they're often shiny, but they can also have the rough coating. It's a phenolic coating. The phenolic coating is kind of a rough, and it's less. It's more fire retardant, so it's actually a better coating. Uh, PTCs, normally you don't want to burn them up to the point where they're on fire. MOVs, uh, that's kind of the point of them, is if a big thing does happen, they're going to melt down and usually not such a good thing okay since I'm talking about MOVs a lot of times with MOVs if there is a big inrush current a lot of energy uh, when you're doing a real MOV circuit you have fuses in line with them to take the MOVs off circuit hopefully before they do start on fire so and it's not as easy as you think it would be but the MOVs using these meters are very small even then in, in the category 4 uh, multimeters 
guessing they're five millimeters maybe. That's essentially kind of teeny when you're talking to MOVs. Sometimes I've seen discs that are like, I think the 14 millimeter discs or maybe even a 20 millimeter disc, that's getting respectable. That's getting uh, bigger. Still not big, 25 millimeters and up. Those are, those are the little bit bigger ones. But, so just to give you an idea uh, about what those devices look like. All right, hey, back to the video. Hey, and subscribe if you haven't done so, okay? Thumbs up, that helps the video a lot, okay? Thanks guys. Okay, five. I added this guy because I thought about it. I, I noticed in some of these meters, some of these really nice meters, they have a lot of containment. And what I mean by that is, like let's say the fuses are kept in their own little compartment. If something blows, that's containment. So there's isolation barriers, little walls they put in, but there's also little rooms or little things that like the fuses, the batteries, you know, there's certain parts of the circuit that kind of fit in their own little room in the plastic. And that's a containment thing. Another thing is the two halves of the clamshell, the top and bottom of the multimeter going together, there's that tongue and groove. Some of them are really deep and some are really strong. And some of them have O-rings in them to keep the, contain or the contamination out of them. And that's another thing I want to talk about. You know what? Let me show you the transient ratings, okay? I think that might help. Okay, guys, so uh, the cat ratings. This is surge. You can have a surge in cat 4 up to 8,000 volts. And that source of the surge might only have 2 ohms. So that's 4,000 volt or 4,000 amps. So yeah, the MOV is going to be... It's got to be big enough to handle that. Okay, now let's just jump down real quick, all the way down 2500. Category one, you could have a 2500 volt. You, there's two levels. You could be one of the two levels. And if you're 2500, it's got 30 ohms. So let's just say that was 25 ohms. That's only 100 amps compared to 4000 amps. You see what I'm saying? Down here, you don't need a MOV or anything near as big as what you need up here. A lot less energy down here. So up here, you can see Category 4 and Category 3 are both 2 ohms, but this one's 3,000 amps, this one's 4,000 amps. So that's the difference, about 1,000 amps. S significant probably, right? Now, Category 2, you can have 6,000, but it's 12 ohms, so it's it's like what six times less current so it's a big drop from three to two that's kind of the point i've been trying to make and then four thousand you know so you can have two levels so anyway that those are the levels of surges and this is the ohm so the closer you are to the outdoors two ohms if you're outdoors two ohms basically if you're indoors 30 ohms in between 12 ohms so you, you can kind of see the energy drops you're a lot safer in cat 2 and cat 1 and i think that's where a lot of us operate us do-it-yourselfers home working on the bench ac dc electronics we're building power supplies with their ac coming off the receptacles and so on first thing we're going to add probably a glass fuse we got a 15 amp breaker you know we could put a little ceramic fuse at the front end uh Oh, one thing I want to mention, the pollution degree. Now, when, now when, when uh, they designed the board with a certain amount of creepage and clearance, they call it. I don't know if I brought that up yet. But when you have two uh, points, say your return and your positive on your meter, when you look inside and they put that little cutout, well, you want to have that distance, and they call it clearance. So clearance is kind of like the... The way the bird flies, it's just metal to metal. So if it, it goes across the board and then jumps across the little gap in the board and then across the board and to the other metal, that's uh, clearance, okay? It's actually a little creepage and clearance. Creepage is if you just don't have that gap, it's just say a half inch from one terminal to the other, that's you have half inch of creepage distance, okay? 
All right, so what happens if that board gets contaminated with some dust and moisture gets on it? Well, that's uh, pollution degree, I think, three. And most of the meters, I think all the meters, I think all the meters I've seen are pollution degree two. Pollution degree two means you could have some temporary, like, humidity or moisture on the board, but it's going to go away and your board's still going to be clean. So that's why a lot of these meters, you know, they're clamshelled and stuff. So, you know, when you open them up, hopefully you never see dirt, you know, pollution basically inside it. If your pollution degree, uh, was it four? I think pollution degree one's the best. Two's the second best. Uh, four, they don't even use for meters. You can't even have four. But four is like rain, snow, junk, you know. Like, say if you're out there, the sprinkler system kind of control electronics, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But stuff that's going to get contaminants on, that's pollution degree four. Pollution degree one is clean, pristine. You know, it's, uh, it's sealed, pretty much. Pollution degree two is where you can get some condensation from humidity and that kind of thing but then it goes away so it's temporary so uh, I think most meters if not all the meters I think are rated to pollution level 2 so I just want to bring that up because that's that's an important thing too and then just to show you quickly some meters that are really safe if you have gloves on it's easy to move this thing around it's just got two positions auto and off no current reading. It's category four uh, Greenlee meter, UL listed right on the front. I totally trust that. It's a name I trust. Hey, there's another thing I, I haven't talked about. There's a square in a square. You'll see like this, uh, this little symbol that it looks like a little square inside a square, and that's double insulation. And that has to do with that, what we're talking about, the uh, voltage separation, isolation, all that kind of stuff. If you have one thing that breaks down, like let's say the rubber on a lead, that you have something else to protecting that voltage from jumping over. It's just not one level of insulation that protects you. I think that's double insulation or reinforced, what they call it. And that's where a lot of the meters you see today will have the uh, double D. Like right there on that meter there's a little double d on this uh little habo test so that and then another thing i didn't talk about was that some meters will scream at you if you turn a dial and you got the leads in the wrong spot some of them like the habo test will light up the two terminals that you're supposed to put the leads in when you move it to kind of remind you like hey you got them in the wrong spot and uh some meters will not allow you to turn the current if the leads are in the wrong spot. They've got a mechanical thing that, you know, blocks you from doing that. And uh, and then some meters, like say the, on the display, you know, like the, like we saw earlier, you know, there's, so there's different features that meters have employed, different manufacturers employed to try to, to try to help you stay safe. But, Alright guys, just wanted to go over that safety stuff with you, just so if you see a review and you don't see the MOVs and the, all the stuff that you see on some other meters, well those other meters might be category 4 and it's really hard. Uh, so if, you, if it's coming from a manufacturer that you even half trust, uh, you got to kind of look into that yourself. I've got an installation tester. I can test up to a thousand volts and if you want me to start doing that on you know what I think I'll do that on meter reviews I'll go ahead and test the voltage isolation with my insulation tester okay we'll do that and by the way this meter here this uh, Tektronix this fluke meter right here um, if you open this guy up it's powered by AC power it's got a glass fuse. How many devices do you see glass fuses on? So, 
It hooked up to 120, right? Is that safe? Is that thing going to go up in flames? Well, probably not. It's pretty old. It's been around for a long time. It's been just fine. Anyway, glass fuse on the back end. On the front end, it only has two amp fuse. And then it does have a high rupture two amp fuse inside, which is kind of funny. But anyway, uh, so, hey, hope you liked it. Uh, I want to, again, thanks my patrons for all the support. And thanks for everybody watching the videos. And I hope you watch to the end. Be safe. Go inspect things for yourself. Make sure you're comfortable. That's the number one thing. And hope this made sense. Give me your comments. Tell me what you guys think. All right. Uh, I just wanted to share some more safety information. Okay. Give you guys some more stuff to think about. So we can move on and I can start doing some meter reviews. And when I make my comments, you'll see where it's coming from. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hey, we'll see you next time. Be safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> see you guys.